Hello and welcome back to Staying Connected. I am excited of the current series that God has us in with our senior pastor, Apostle Van Marie Green, of In This World, But Not Of This World. And if you got ears to hear, because this is the year of the ear, and if you have eyes to see what's going on and even see within yourself and a heart to receive, it should be helping you because my God, it's really been helping me. So let's start from the top. Or shall I say, let's start from the bottom, the foundation. God gave our apostle a foundation message for this series titled The High Priestly Prayer of Jesus. In this message, she showed us through the word of God in John that Jesus prayed for us, prayed for his disciples, his true disciples who God gave him. He kept them in his word. He showed them the way and it was not going to be up to us because he was going to be crucified to do the will of Father God. So Jesus prayed for us. He didn't just leave us in a man. He didn't come and abandon us. He prayed for us. And so the next message was in this world, not of this world, the series. And how Holy Spirit led our apostles to just show us that it so many op things that we operate in, but we are not of this world, so we should not be operating as the world operates. And it which leads us to our third message of Although we are in this world, we are a new creation in Jesus Christ. And so to be a new us, we have to have a new mind, a new me, a new mind. So I need to have a new mind with my mind stayed on Jesus. And that's what's going to help me to, although live in this world, but not be of this world. Then I came around and talked about denying ourselves. So when we have a new mind, because we are a new creation, we have to deny ourselves. We have to take up our cross. We must follow Jesus. And that's daily. It's not sometimes when we feel like it, when things going good or when things going bad. It's always. We must deny ourselves. But how are we going to deny ourselves? We have to be led by the Spirit. Our next topic that Holy Spirit gave apostle, led by the Spirit. We must be led by the Spirit, not by our flesh. Because we are in this world and not of this world. So we should not be operating in the flesh like the world. We should be led by the Spirit. And when we are led by the Spirit, the more we try to operate in that, guess what, y'all? We realize that we need the Holy Ghost. We need emphasis on the need. We need Holy Ghost. That was last Sunday's message. So if you haven't listened to any of them, please go back and listen because we are building here from the bottom up. So God has a, a place he wants to take us, but we have to have our ears ready because it's the year of the ear. When we're hearing better, we're going to be seeing better, and we have a responsibility when we hear the truth and receive the truth that we must live in the truth by Holy Spirit. So, so many times we have like good intentions. And some of us, that's by our nature, how we were raised, our own conscience. We have really good intentions. But it's impossible <laughs> for us to live the life that God has designed for us to live, that has God has called us to live, the life that Jesus lived and showed us how to live on our own intentions, character, and good desires. That is not enough. We are very limited. When it comes to that, because we're going to be led by emotions, led by our own desires, and we should not be led by our desires according to the word of God. And there are limits to what we can manage on our own. And so we can um, manage ourselves even through some self-control. You know, I'm not going to do that, you know, because I know that's not good for me. And that's how so many people in the world can gain all these things of the world because they got self-control in the on the flesh side, but not self-control on the spirit side. And so we can look back at these commandments. Let's look back at these 10 commandments and see what God has told us not to do we sh or to do. One, put God first. Two, don't make false gods. Three, respect God's name. Four, respect the day of rest, the Sabbath. Five, honor the parents. Six, do not kill people. Six, respect our marriage vows. Don't commit adultery. Eight, don't steal. Nine, don't lie. Now, those nine, we can see if people are doing it or not. People can see if we are doing it or not. But there is one commandment, the last commandment that is internal, that nobody can see whether or not we are doing it, and that is do not covet. 
It is an inward desire. Nobody can see what we, whether or not we're doing it, whether or not we are jealous, whether or not we are comparing or longing for something that does not belong to us. And God sees it. But a lot of times we operate out of that through that covetousness or through that covenant that we operate. And we can put up a fraud up front and try to do it because we got good intentions, good desires, and we're going to let other people see us doing these nine. But this tenth one is internal. Nobody will see it. The law can't arrest us. If all ten of them was the law, the law can't arrest us for that one because it's not seen. And so that's when we hit a wall. We can do so much, but we need help. And the help comes from Holy Spirit. Um, through our messages, Apostle showed us and reminded us that Holy Spirit gives us life. Holy Spirit gives us breath. He hovered upon the face of the waters. And when God blew his breath into Adam and Eve, God had to blow his breath no more. My God, God's breath, his spirit, the wind of God is that powerful that it gave us life for generations and generations and generations. And so when we have those desires that arise from the inside or those thoughts that come through temptation, our own human abilities, our character traits, our best intentions cannot help us. It didn't even help David. And David, King David, he was a man after God's own heart. God said it over and over and over. He was a man after God's own heart, but guess what? <laughs> it didn't stop him. From those lustful desires and from sinning. And yes, although David sinned and he sorrowed over that and he truly repented when God, the spirit of truth, revealed himself to him. The spirit of truth had to come in. And we know that the spirit of truth is the spirit of God, the Holy Spirit. So the spirit of truth had to come in to us and show us ourselves, come in and show us what we need to do. So although David was a man after God's own heart. He didn't have the power that was necessary to overcome his flesh. None of us have the power that is necessary to overcome ourselves. None of us have the power to have this new mind. None of us have the power to deny ourselves and take up our cross and follow Jesus. None of us have the power to be led by the Holy Spirit unless the Holy Spirit leads us. Unless the Holy Spirit do it. And our lusts have to be denied. It has to be crucified. It has to be put to death according to the word of God in Romans 8, 13, Galatians 5, 24, Colossians 3 and 5. It must be crucified. And we are incapable of completely overcoming these lusts and these destructive traits that come to us naturally by being in the flesh. That's why we must walk in the spirit, not in our own spirit, in Holy Spirit. We need the Holy Ghost. We need the Holy Ghost's help. So I'm here to just show us how we need Holy Spirit help to keep us in line, to keep us connected to our message, our theme from our apostle of in this world, but not of this world. Why do we need Holy Spirit? Because we cannot help ourselves. If we had a choice, most of us will operate in the flesh. If not today, if not tomorrow, or when the test comes and the devil, apostle said the devil is revengeful. He wants to keep coming back because he can't come back into heaven. He can't come back into the kingdom of God. So he want to suck as many of us into his kingdom or to fall, uh, to give up, to be discouraged, to deny Christ and stop and not deny ourselves, not truly be led by Holy Spirit. So Jesus prayed for us. And he promised the disciples in John. Now, Apostle gave us some homework this week to reread -re John chapter 15 through 17. I hope you have. If you have not, please do so. Let Holy Spirit speak to you. Let Holy Spirit remind you of what Jesus said. Jesus said a lot before he died. He poured into his disciples. We are his disciples. We should want to be. So we have to be aware of what Jesus said. That Holy Spirit is coming. It was expedient that he leave us so that Holy Spirit can come and be our helper. We will receive help from the Holy Spirit because Holy Spirit was with Jesus as he walked on the face of the earth, as he denied his own lust, his own temptations, as he did not sin. So the only way we're going to live like Jesus is if we connect with Holy Spirit. So in staying connected, 
the topic of the, I mean, the title of this series, we must stay connected to Holy Spirit. Say it with me. I need you, Holy Spirit. We all need help. A lot of things we could do on our own, but there are just some things we cannot do. Let's talk about some ways that Holy Spirit gives us power. He empowers us. First, Holy Spirit gives us power through life itself. The second way Holy, empower, Holy Spirit empowers us to do his service. In the Bible, in the Old Testament, and the Old Testament and the New Testament, Holy Spirit empowered these people to do great works. Holy Spirit empowered Joshua with his leadership skills and his wisdom. Holy Spirit empowered um, the people to the specific instructions on the construction of the tabernacle in Exodus 31 and 3. Prophets such as Isaiah and Daniel were all empowered through prophecy under the power of the Holy Spirit. Jesus was empowered by Holy Spirit at his baptism throughout his ministry to fulfill all the miracles in the gospels the disciples and the early christians were empowered by holy spirit to perform miracles and had great power when they proclaimed the word of god apostle acts like where are the signs and the wonders the people are wondering where are all these signs and wonders that they used to have back in the day are we allowing holy spirit to lead us to help us to guide us truly we have to submit to holy spirit because he makes a difference in us Holy Spirit empowers us as Christians for service in so many areas. We are empowered to have effective prayers by the Holy Spirit. When we pray according to the word of God, when we pray in Jesus' name, God hears us. God answers our prayers, and we are empowered through effective prayers. Holy Spirit makes the scriptures come alive and speak to our hearts. We are convicted by the Holy Spirit when we hear the word of God, that we may repent, that we may return back to God. God's so good. He give us such way of to come back to him over and over and over again by Holy Spirit leading us. If we don't allow Holy Spirit to lead us, we won't return. Return back to God. It is not too late. People, God, it is not too late. Every day is a day that we have a new mercy, new grace by Holy Spirit to come back to God, to come back to Christ. Get back in fellowship. Get back in your prayer. Get back in your word. Get back connected to a local assembly. Get back to your church. Get back to your pastor. Get back to the people of God in unity that we can pray together and we can grow. That's what Jesus prayed for in the high priestly prayer for us to have unity by Holy Spirit. Holy Spirit is going to empower us to overcome the spiritual opposition, those weapons of the warfare that are not carnal, but mighty through Christ Jesus. We have the victory in them when we seek the source of power, Holy Spirit. He's going to lead us. He knows it's not, it's not natural. These are spiritual attacks against us. So we have to combat it spiritually. We must be empowered by Holy Spirit. We are empowered to preach the gospel from the pulpit, in our homes, to our families, on our jobs, even in the street. Let me share the gospel with you. You going through something. Holy Spirit going to lead us, but can he trust us that when he speaks to go witness to that person? Show my love to that person, even if it's a stranger. Can Holy Spirit trust us to do his will? Can he trust us to share the gospel even through our lifestyle and our words? Holy Spirit is going to empower us to work his miracles, his provision in people's lives. Even in the word of God, when he said give and it will be given unto you by men. Holy Spirit is working. Holy Spirit going to work to share the gospel. That's what Holy Spirit does. He worked. Jesus came to show us the way, to show the disciples the way. And Holy Spirit fell upon the apostles, the people, so that they could go be his witnesses. We could do even greater wonders and works than Jesus. But we must remember to be led by Holy Spirit, not by our own selfish uh, ambitions and achievements to make our name great, to make Jesus' name great so God can get all the glory. Holy Spirit is going to give empower us to have discernment. God, what should I do? Our counselor, Holy Spirit, is. He is going to lead us and counsel us against the forces of darkness, even against ourselves. When ourselves want to go to them dark places, even in depression, Holy Spirit, lift me up. Holy Spirit, 
Give me a fresh wind that I don't live in a depressed place, a depressed state, a doubting state, a state of confusion. Give me clarity, Holy Spirit, through your word, Jesus. Give me clarity in my mind, in my hearing, in my vision, in my words, in my heart, in my walk with Christ, that I be all you call me to be. That walking in the Spirit, denying ourselves continually, we need Holy Spirit help to deny that fear, deny that doubt, deny um it all <laughs> to deny the lust. You know, we tend to think just on the lust, but we have fear that we operate in, doubt that we operate in, um, lack of self-control that we operate in. We need Holy Spirit to help us to control our mouths, to control what we put into our mouth, control how we manage the temple of God, our bodies, what we do to ourselves. Sexual sins, lying, stealing, those lusts and desires that are in our heart that we long for, that coveting that leads us to sin even more and more in many ways. Because you know what? If you're a lie, you're a steal. If you steal, you're a kill. We need Holy Spirit to help us. So we don't even start with that lie. Help us, Holy Spirit. And guess what? Holy Spirit has unlimited help. He is our unlimited guidance to what God called us to do and wants us to do. Nobody can do everything right. But with Holy Spirit, he knows. He helps us. Oh, when the apostle was like, Holy Spirit, you know, call on Holy Spirit for what we need. What the word said he is. He is our counselor. Counsel me through this, Holy Spirit. Help me, God. Give me advice. Help remind me of what the word said when I really, really, really want to do what the world say, what my flesh say. Let him be your guide. And so that we can be cleansed from him, from ourselves, from the sin of this world. And the Holy Spirit is the spirit of truth. He will help us. He will teach us. God, I don't know what to do. I don't know what to do on this job. I don't know what to do as a man, a woman, a husband, a wife, a parent, an employee, any new venture. If God's called you to ministry, I don't know what to do. But you can never fail <laughs> imitating Christ. So many times in society, we have so many people that we look up to, and rightfully so. They may inspire us or encourage us, um, and they may be positive role models for us, but nobody is perfect except Jesus. He showed us the way. So we can never be wrong following Jesus, imitating Jesus. That's why we must get into our word, study the words of Jesus, the life of Jesus, how he denied, how he responded, how he taught, how he loved, how he forgave, how he endured the cross. That's why our eyes must be fixed. But if we're not hearing the call to fix our eyes on Jesus, because time is drawing up. Like, time is drawing up. I don't know what's to come, but the Spirit of God knows. So he ain't going to lead us wrong. I ain't, he ain't going to tell us nothing wrong. So that's why our eyes must be in tune to what the Spirit of God is saying to the church. This is the kingdom message, y'all. If y'all are in y'all word, if y'all are following other uh, spiritual leaders who are in alignment with Christ, he is speaking to the church. Get ready. Don't be so caught up in this world that as we have decisions to make, choices to make, that we are making the flesh choice and not the spirit choice. We have to hear his voice. So we receive Holy Spirit. Like Holy Spirit came when Jesus left. The Spirit fell. Holy Spirit didn't die. Nowhere in the Word of God does it tell us that the Holy Spirit died. Holy Spirit is still present with us. And when we repent, when we accept Jesus, he is in us. And now we can be filled and refilled and consumed with Holy Spirit. The more we listen, because it's the year of the ear, the more we listen and obey. Listen and obey Holy Spirit. Like, why would Holy Spirit keep talking to us and we not listening? Why would you keep talking to anybody and they aren't listening? We have to listen and obey. It is so discouraging when we talk to somebody and they hear us, but they didn't do anything we said. Holy Spirit is helping us. Holy Spirit wants to lead us. The question is, will you let him lead you? The question is, will you obey his voice? The question is, will you obey what the word of God says? Will you be led by your spirit? Or will you continue to disregard the word of God? Disregard the truth? Disregard his counsel? Disregard his love? 
and be led into sin, to be led to death, to be led against him away from God instead of being drawn to him. So Heavenly Father, we pray for ourselves, Lord, that we have sinned against you. We have doubted you. We've tried to trust in our own desires, our own lusts, our own skills, abilities, our character traits, even how we were raised, what we think we can do. But Holy Spirit, we repent that we did not listen to your voice for every time we have not trusted in you or have faith in you. So Holy Spirit, empower us again. We step back that you may step up in us, that you may use us, that you may speak through us, that you may speak to us, and lead us in obedience to the word of God. And through that, that your love will abound in our heart even the more. That your love will produce the love, the kindness, the joy, the peace, the gentleness, the goodness, and faith. The gifts of your spirit. That your, your love, through your love, that we will operate in the works of the spirit. That we will be able to witness. That we will be effective witnesses even in our lifestyle and in our words. That by your spirit you will empower us to not be afraid to share your gospel not be afraid of rejection but to continue to pursue to share the gospel of jesus christ that all men will be saved help us holy spirit to glorify the lord in our lifestyle in our words in our faith and in our works holy spirit illuminate us again light us on fire for you again make us salty again that we may be the salt of the earth that you have called us to be Lord Jesus. Holy Spirit, reunite us with Jesus Christ even the more as we obey you. Help us to hear you better. Help us to see you better. Help us to choose to walk in the spirit and not in the flesh. And we give your name the praise, glory, and honor because we need you, Holy Spirit, and we're going to choose to live by the spirit. So let us be in this world, but not of this world. Continue to join us for our messages because Holy Spirit is using our apostle because we're going higher. We ain't going lower. We going higher in Jesus' name. Join us this Sunday in person with your mask at 10 a.m. at our church. Visit our website for more information. We love you. We are praying for you. If you have a prayer request, send it to us because we are praying by the Holy Spirit. Have a great day.